Welcome everyone to another night review. Today we have the all new 2022 Toyota Corolla Cross. And in this night video, I'm gonna show you all these exterior lights, the adaptive lighting system, some interior ambient lighting, and get it out on the road for a test drive. Let's get going. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in for this Corolla Cross night video. Be sure to check out the daytime review coming soon after this video. So this is the top XLE trim, non-hybrid model. And right up front, you're gonna get standard LED headlights. So LED high and low beams, no matter which model in the LED daytime running light on the XLE trim here. You'll see that we have these LED fog lights as well for part of this XLE package, and that even gives us LED signals. So LED fogs, LED daytime running lights, and LED turn signals on the XLE model. And then we've got adaptive lights, which I'll show you in a little bit, optional. And taking a step back, we have the Celestite Gray Metallic. It's like a bluish gray color. You'll see the marker lights on the sides and that turn signal in the mirror is LED on everything except the base model. This is a smaller sibling of the RAV4. It still has good ground clearance and some decent space in some areas, but definitely not as big. And as we come to the back, we're gonna get an LED stoplight standard, but actual LED tail lights are going to be just on this XLE trim. So it depends which trim level you get for the LED tail lights. Otherwise, an LED stoplight is totally standard. No LED license plate lights, but I wouldn't really expect that on this model. What do you think of the look? And let's take a look at the brake and reverse lights. Coming to the cargo area, you can get a power lift gate on here. Just gonna push that button with the smart key. You can open it up and let's take a look at any cargo light. So I see just one little cargo light over here on the left. It's really dim, it's not LED, and that doesn't light up hardly anything. I mean, this is pretty accurate on the camera right now. Not a very helpful light, but this is the subcompact compact class. On the flip side, at least you get a light up here to close it and lock it. To give you a little closer look at this Celestite metallic paint, it's a very interesting color. It's definitely not uh, blue, but it's not bona fide gray either. It's just interesting. So coming inside, I'll show you more on the interior in a little bit. You're gonna see a little bit of ambient lighting and some blue themed lights, LED interior lighting here, as well as the back seat. Let me show you more. And by the way, if you wanna see more details on this interior in the daytime and all the features, be sure to check out that daytime review in the description below. All right, y'all, let's hop inside, take a look at the interior and in detail, be sure to check out that full review again, but start it up. I'll show you the headlights, do a little dance in here, but you've got Corolla Cross on there. We've got this digital display, definitely a blue themed interior. And I'll go through everything here in just a second. But first of all, over on the door, we've got a little bit of ambient lighting that comes down on the armrest. We've only got one illuminated window switch and the lock buttons are not illuminated at all. I mean, I don't know why Toyota cheaps out so much on such small little things like that, but the mirror control at least is illuminated. And then we've got our automatic high beam setting. You push this button right here to activate the automatic high beams. And then this is to adjust your interior brightness. Let me show you. So not only does it adjust the button brightness, but it adjusts the overall brightness of this display too buttons on the screen, buttons all around you. The ambient lighting does not have any effect at all with that though, which is kind of interesting. But I love how simple and easy it is to just adjust that on the fly. All steering wheel buttons are blue backlighting. Everything is easy to read. Up here, the XLE gets a larger display like this one. All blue lighting in here, definitely lots of blue. Whereas you go from like Hyundai and Kia, they have blue light filters in their vehicle. So if that matters to you, keep that in mind. And then we've got this display here. So you'll get a seven inch or an eight inch display depending on which trim you go with. The XLE gets this eight inch screen. I like how all the buttons have nice backlighting. There's physical controls with everything. This is Toyota's older system. So it's not the greatest, but you still get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Plus this will be wireless on the hybrid models, but not on this pure gas model. This one also has the optional JBL sound system in here. And actually real quick while I'm up here, we go to the menu here, go to setup, 
Then we scroll down and go to vehicle, go to vehicle customization. You can go to lights and there's just a little bit you can do. I don't see a function to adjust the ambient lighting at all or adjust the adaptive headlights. So something to keep in mind. But if you go to menu down in the corner, you got a quick little display button to where you can easily and quickly adjust the screen brightness, even the contrast. So I like the quick and easy access to be able to adjust things like that, make it how you like it. Coming down, all the climate controls are uh nicely lit dual zone climate in this particular model down here your heated seat buttons are illuminated as well that uh, wireless charger is actually included here and nice illumination illuminated buttons down here there's no direct illumination on this center console area from overhead but the cup holders have some nice little blue ambient lighting in them center armrest is as dark as can be but if i turn this on there's no light inside, just something to keep in mind. If we go over to the glove box, there is a nice light in there and it seems to be decent size. Right up overhead, we've got this automatic dimming rear mirror. This is actually the optional frameless mirror. An auto dim mirror is standard on the XLE only, otherwise it'll be manual flipping. Overhead, we get LED lighting here as well. So check it out. We've got individual LED lights on the side. It's kind of a cool design up here. You press this door button if you want the lights to turn off or not when your door opens, or you can turn them all on with that. And they're actually quite bright in here. They light things up really well and right here vanity light in mirror of course and just a quick note toyota says the ambient lighting is only on the xle i'm not sure about the hybrid model but i'm assuming that means down there that probably means in the cup holders and at the door it's potential it's possible that maybe the other trims maybe have this but not some of the other lighting i'm not sure but keep that in mind one of the most annoying things about the ambient lighting though is that as soon as you go into any gear, drive or reverse, everything dims significantly. I mean, it almost turns into nothing. See, then it comes back. I don't know why they do this. They don't give you any control over it, but it's just the way it is. Now, if we take a look at the headlights, as soon as you turn the car on, you get this nice little dance in front of you because we've got the adaptive front lighting system and their auto leveling. So these are just the low beams. You've got nice and bright in the middle, not the best fade out to each side, but that's got good height right there, which might lead to good distance and high beams right there in the middle, nice and bright off into the quarters. If I turn the fog lights off, you know, there's a little bit of peripherals turning those back on. They don't function as cornering lights to illuminate automatically, but they might help in some situations. Now these headlights get the best possible rating from the IIHS and the non-adaptive lights will give you an acceptable rating, the second best rating. Now lining these headlights up on some distance right here, you can see on the right side, the poles are illuminated, the fire hydrant, those are pretty good. On the left, we still get a little illumination on the bottom of the hill, which is better than some vehicles, but it's not great. High beams light up the hill, okay. It's not as bright as some, but at least you do still have some coverage here. And I don't know how far away I am, but just for reference, I zoom out, that's a pretty good distance away. All right, y'all, we are now behind the wheel of this Corolla Cross, and the goal of this night video is so that you get an idea of what it's like to drive this car at night, how well the headlights do, what this adaptive function looks like, and whether or not it might be worth it for you. We're gonna also test out the automatic high beams. I'm just gonna touch on the driving impressions, but most of that will be reserved for the full review. But one thing I want you to know, in case you didn't hear it or, or missed it, the ambient lighting dims significantly once you shift into gear. So in park, it's kind of bright, but otherwise it's almost non-existent the rest of the time. Now, let me just get a little quick pedal down. All right, so this has the, just a pretty putsy little two liter four cylinder and it's somewhat economical. There is a hybrid coming out after this, which is gonna have more power and better efficiency, so maybe something to look forward to. But on this road, I'm gonna turn on the automatic high beams. I wish the automatic high beam button was actually like on the end of the stock, but the automatic high beams are on right now and they just shut off with that car over there. So that's always a good sign and they turn back on. I've had pretty good experience with Toyota's automatic high beam system 
and not too many complaints with it. It seems to work well and be responsive, but always be mindful that it's not perfect. And if people are crossing in front of you sideways, it generally does not shut off. So you could be blinding somebody from the side. So um, no, no real complaints about that. The rear view mirror is automatic dimming on the top trim. And then these side mirrors, of course, will not be not typical in this class of car anyways but even on this well-lit road i can see the road really well i mean it's just the lights are definitely bright nice bright white uh, high beams turned off and they just turned back on but let's get on a dark road all right we're now crossing over onto a nice dark road not much for lighting good news about the adaptive function is that the high beams and the low beams are both adaptive as we come over the hill get some distance on these high beams they're pretty good not fantastic but they do a decent job now i'm just gonna go into the low beams here and they're reaching out into that corner actually pretty well that's a little better than i was kind of expecting but these do get the best possible rating whoa going around the corner do you see those headlights they just shot right up the corner i'm gonna swerve a little bit see if you can see that they do a great job illuminating around that corner they were very responsive as soon as i turned the wheel it was like boom they just shot right up there so we're on the low beams here beam pattern is pretty far right now and then high beams i wish the high beams were a little bit brighter further off but there's the low beams just to show you definitely a stark difference those high beams are doing just fine especially for this class now let me leave the high beams on going around this corner wow yep it's really helpful that the high beams can be adaptive like that low beams and they just shoot up the corner they just shot over there very quickly now the low beams are still on give you a good look at flat distance here the distance is good but not great i'll take it high beams i think you'll be happy with it what do you think give me some feedback now peripherals i turned the fog lights off looking off into the ditch the fog light does give you a little bit of immediate distance and the width of these headlights is okay it's definitely not great for width but i think that they're actually doing doing pretty good you know these do get the best possible rating from the iihs with headlight rating so keep that in mind now with zero light at all on this road where the headlights shine they're very bright and they are auto leveling so they will move a little up and down depending on the angle of the vehicle you can see the cutoff line between left side and right side high beams on here nice and bright there's no cornering like short cornering function the adaptive function is going to help you more so with uh further down the road but these quick little corners right here, I can actually see a little bit better than some vehicles over there. There's a little bit of light off that way. Now, if I start to go that way, turn the wheel, the adaptive lights moved over there, and then on over to the right, the adaptive lights move. Not the best for short corners, but overall, I'm happy with these lights. I like the fact that we get a little bit of ambient lighting in here, but just like Lexus, the lights dim as soon as you go into drive it's kind of annoying but give me your feedback let me know what you think i think the adaptive lighting system is definitely worth it you get better headlights you get better cornering visibility so if you do a lot of night driving be sure to check those out and get those but also check out the daytime review of this corolla cross thanks for watching and have a great night